I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today's topics uh, will include the concept of sets. Well, there is a well-defined mathematical uh, sets theory, which we're not really going into any depths today. I would just like to explain certain concepts of uh, sets theory, just to be able to use these concepts in further study of certain subjects, which we will touch. Um, sets theory is really very deep, and it includes lots of different topics. I will just touch some of them, and I will try to exemplify the concepts which are involved. Um, first of all, what is a set? We don't really define this. The concept of a set and element of this set are so elementary that probably the best would be just to explain and um, uh, just put a couple of examples of what it is. Um, you can consider a, a set of uh, points on a plane. Uh, you can consider a set of people who live on the planet Earth, a uh, set of triangles which you can draw on a piece of paper, whatever. Any object can be an element of some set. So, without a rigid definition of the concept of a set, we can probably understand um, that you can introduce a concept of empty set, the one which does not contain any elements, and in mathematics it's usually uh, signified as this striped zero or something, letter O, whatever. Um, so, there is a concept of a subset. Um, subset, um, if you have certain set, which I can just um, uh, exemplify as, for instance, set of all the points in this plane which belong to this closed um, object, all these points are set, then part of it, only those which belong to this closed contour uh, can be explained as a, can, can be considered as a subset. Um, so we have a set, we have a subset, we have an empty set. Um, now a few operations which you can do um, based on set theory. Um, again, the only thing which we are talking right now about is whether element belongs to a set or does not belong to a set. So there are certain operations on sets which you can imagine. Like, for instance, if you take all people who were born prior to the year 2000 and uh, people who were born from 2000 to 2001 so one is less than 2000 uh, then greater than 2000 sorry greater than 2000 and uh, and less than 2001. So this is one set, and this is another set. Well, obviously, if you consider people who were born before 2000 and from 2000 but before 2001, you think, and quite right, that you will get the set of all people who were born before 2001. So we have it made some kind of an operation from two different sets we have created the new one. So you can perform certain uh, operations with sets and they are uh, pretty well defined in mathematics. So I'll just put them on the board. It's very simple and uh, very quick. If you have two elements, uh, if you have two uh, sets A and B, you can perform the operation of union Out of two different sets, we have created a new set which contains all elements of the first element um, and uh, the second element. So basically, if you have, let's say, this as uh, all elements of the A are um, on, this, uh, on this plane inside this contour, and then you have this as B, as you see, we have some common elements as well. So 
all elements which belong to um, either of these two are basically here. I will just put my new counter here. So all these elements belong to basically a union of um, A or B. Um, logically speaking, we very often use the word or because how to describe these elements? These are elements which belong either to A or, or to B. That's what union is. Fine, next operation. Next operation is called intersection. Intersection. Now, what's the intersection? Again, let's use these diagrams which, by the way, are called Venn diagrams. So if this is A and this is B, intersection, as pretty obvious from the word itself, is something which belongs to both. Only this area, which belongs to both, is uh, an intersection, the definition of intersection. And very often, we will use the word and to describe intersection, because these are elements which belong to A and B, to both of those guys. Well, um, just as an example, what's an intersection this and this, if there are no common elements? Well, intersection between these two guys is empty set, since there is no elements which belong to both of them. So this is just one of the small properties of this. All right, we've got union and we've got intersection. Um, another concept, concept of a subset. So if you have a big set, let's call it U universal set and some subset of this, let's call it A. Uh, there is a concept of a complement, complement of A towards a universal set U, which A belongs to. Basically, the complement is everything which does not belong to A, so it's this area around A. So all these uh, elements which do not belong to A are complement. And with the complement, the word not actually is associated very much, because these are elements which do not belong to A. Now, a few very interesting rules in, uh, in the set theory, which you might find kind of um, common with um, arithmetic. Basically, my point is that union is very much like addition, and um, intersection is very much like multiplication. Well, obviously, I cannot say that this is this, but there are certain similarities between these quantities, between these operations. So, um, uh, first, what's very important is these operations are associative and cumulative, um, and commutative, sorry, commutative. Um, so the associative law is this. If you have three different uh, sets which you are trying to unionize together, you can do it in this sequence. First A and B, uh, sorry, A uh, union B, and then union C. Or you can do it in this sequence. Well, associative law is basically this. Uh, commutative law is saying that the sequence is not important.
By the way, the commutative law is not always kind of obvious. There are certain operations which are not commutative. But in theory, which we are talking about among sets, the operation of union is uh, commutative. Now, absolutely the same thing uh, is with uh, interception. So if I will just replace the union with interception, both uh, associative and cumulative law um, will hold. So intersection is associative and commutative. Great. Now, why am I saying that um, there is certain similarity between addition, let's say, and union? Well, look at this property. If you take any set and unionize it with empty set, well, by definition of union, we will get another set with elements which belong to either A or empty set. Well, nothing belongs to empty set, so basically only A remains. What's the similarity with addition? Well, if you take an, uh, some number and add zero, you will get the same number, right? There are other similarities, but this is kind of obvious. Now, similarly, if you do an intersection with M to set, well, look at this this way. We need uh, a certain set of elements which belong to both A and empty, but nothing belongs to empty, so you can't really have anything, any element in, in the result, so the result will be obviously an empty. Uh, by the way, similarity to multiplication is obviously this, right? Now, um, there is another very interesting law, it's called distributive law. Um, among the numbers, it's something like this. I'll put parentheses around so it's more obvious. So if you have a sum of two numbers multiplied by the third one, you can multiply first by third and then second by third and, and add them together. Very similar law exists among um, sets using union and uh, uh, intersection, again in this kind of similarity. So if I will have A union B, intersect with C, it will be the same as A intersect with C unionized with B intersect with C. Now, uh, there is a relatively simple proof of this concept, but let me just draw a diagram which will help you to understand what this actually means. So you have uh, a union of two different sets, so these are sets, A and B. They have some intersection just to make the whole thing prettier. And we and, and, uh, intersect it with C. So let's say this is C. Well, now let's think about what is um, the result of this. First of all, union of A and B, remember it's everything which belongs to either a or B, so it's this contour, right? I'll put double line maybe here if it's helping. Now, intersection with C is something which belongs to both this union and C, which is this piece. Right? So it's this piece of A which belongs to C, and piece of B which belongs to C, and something in the middle. Well, let's think about what exactly these three pieces can be constructed from. Well, let's talk about A intersect with B. Well, if this is A, and you intersect it with C, then you will have this area. 
right? This one. This is A intersect with C. Now, B intersect with C is obviously this piece. And when we unionize it together, we get exactly the same thing as in the first place. All right. So this is a distribu uh, distributive law of union versus intersection. And similarly, as I was saying, among numbers, you have this. Full similarity. That's why I was talking that union is very much like addition and uh, intersection is very much like multiplication. Now, what's interesting and uh, kind of surprising that similar distributive law of multiplication against uh, summation is not really true. If somebody writes something like this, I just reverse plus and minus, as you see here. Well, this is definitely not true. However, what's interesting is that among sets with uh, union and intersection, similar formula is actually true. So if I will have this, so instead of union, I'm using intersection, and instead of intersection, I'm, use, I'm using union. So this is actually a true thing. And again, I'm going to just explain it by showing on the diagram. Again, it was kind of unexpected uh, quality. After you're used to the concept of union being more or less like addition and uh, intersection more or less like multiplication, this is an unexpected um, quality. But anyway, let's just try. So again, this is A, this is B, and this is C. All right, A intersection with B is this piece. Right? And union with C, it's union with this thing, so that would cover this area. So it's basically entire C plus this piece. All right, let's do it from this side. A um, unionized with C, well, this is this thing. A unionized with C, right? Um, now, what's B unionized with C? Well, that's obviously this thing. B unionized with C. Now, what's common? Well, obviously, the same um, uh, area which uh, I put all these uh, strikes in, this is exactly the intersection. Again, let me just show it again. This is A unionized with C. And this is B unionized with C. So what's the common between them? Intersection? It's this area, exactly the same one. So this is just an illustration of this uh, uh, property which can definitely be uh, examined in more details. Now, a couple of other properties. Basically, the whole purpose of this exercise is to establish some kind of a language for future studies. So if I will tell uh, something like, let's consider a set of something, we understand what we're talking about. Now, um, another operation was a complement, if you remember. So if you have some big universal set, and this is A, then there is a concept of a complement of A, which is everything outside of A. Well, let's consider you have two different sets, A and B. 
and I would like to examine what is a complement of A union B. So this is A union B, right? And what's the complement? It's everything which is outside. So A union B, and I'm complementing this. Well, what I'm saying is that it's the same as complement A intersection with complement B. It's just another property. Well, let's think about if I take complement of A is everything outside of A. Everything is outside of A. Complement of B is everything outside of B. So if I will do something, you know what? I'll just draw another picture and it will be a little better. So this is my universal set. This is A and this is B. Okay, everything outside of A, I will use these. Okay, everything outside of B, I will use these lines. So, what's the area where I have both lines this way and that way? Well, this is an area, as you see, exactly outside of both A and B. So the intersection of these two areas, striped this way and striped that way, is all these, um, uh, all this area where strikes are in both directions. So it's exactly outside of this, which is exactly outside of the union, outside of the union. Now, um, if you can think about uh, the complement as, let's say, multiplication by minus one. Again, using this parallelism between addition and union, multiplication and uh, uh, intersection, you can think that this is, from the logical standpoint, it's, if you remember, associated with the word not, like everything which does not belong to A. From the arithmetic parallel, it might be associated with multiplication by minus 1. And uh, if you do this parallel, a plus b, and you uh, multiply it by minus 1, you can obviously say this is minus 1 times a plus minus 1 times b. As you see, this is a plus, and this is a plus, so we don't really change in arithmetic uh, the operation between these two uh, 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 elements which we are adding. In the set theory, we are changing union on to the intersection. So that's the difference. So parallel is not really complete. Just sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. This is just an example when this is not exactly the same as in uh, arithmetic. Now, similarly enough, there is a symmetry in the whole thing. Um, the complement of intersection is union of complements. Well, again, let's just try to demonstrate it uh, on diagram. So we have intersection and its complement, all right? This is our universal set. This is A and this is B. Uh, so first we do the intersection and then the complement. Intersection is inside of this area. So the complement is everything outside of it. So let me use these. lines to do it, right? Everything outside of this area has these lines. Now, fine, we understand that. What if I would like to do this on the right side? Well, let me try to duplicate the picture, more or less, to my abilities of drawing. So, first we do uh, the complement of A, 
then the complement of B, and then the unionizing. Okay, complement of A is obviously everything which is outside of A. So let's use this area, which is marked with strikes of this direction, outside of A. All right. Now everything outside of B. Okay, outside of B we will use this. I'm not that good with drawing, but just for illustration purposes I'm sure it's sufficient. Okay, so um, now we have to unionize these two areas. Area with strikes this way and area with strikes this way. Unionize means we have to have all the elements which belong to either one or another. So whatever um, the direction of this uh, uh, strike is, is good enough. So all these uh, points and all these points, everywhere, wherever there are some lines, is our area, right? So, and that actually everything except this little piece, which is exactly like same, same, same thing in this particular picture as well. So that illustrates this particular rule. So negation, uh, as sometimes this complement called negation because it's not, has these two properties. Well, um, what else is interesting? Well, if you have this universal set and you have uh, a subset which is actually an empty set. So what is a complement of the empty set? Let's call it Z. So the big set is called Z. This is a small one, well, small empty actually. So what's the complement of uh, empty set? Well, obviously it's the entire Z, right? Opposite, what's the complement of Z? Well, that's obviously an empty set. Because it's everything which does not belong in Z, but there is nothing which does not belong to Z. Z is our universal set, there is nothing more. So we get this. Uh, similarly, um, what else is left? Well, um, what's interesting about the set theory is that this is the language. And uh, not only we can use it for purely mathematical um, objects like uh, know, uh, equations, numbers, uh, uh, triangles or whatever else. We can also use the same type of logic, uh, the same type of language with uh, mathematical logic. Now that will be a subject of our next um, uh, lecture, but still what's interesting is that similar notation like union, uh, which is equivalent to logical or, and uh, intersection which is very similar to logical and, or um, complement, which is basically a, a negation and not, we will use the same language in the next lecture when we will talk about logic. Uh, so that's why the language is very important, and uh, uh, I would like you maybe to uh, re-examine everything which uh, I was just uh, talking about. And again, uh, let's just repeat uh, all these little properties which we have, uh, properties of uh, uh, associative law for union and uh, uh, intersection, the commutative law for union and intersection, distributive law of union against intersection or intersection against union, um, the laws of uh, complement, basically, and operation with empty set. That would be very much like a summary of whatever I was just talking about. So thanks for your attention, and uh, we will talk next time about logic and the same language will be used. Thank you.